Red Bay Church, welcome back. My name is Derek. This is our girl, Gracie. <laughs> Look, we're happy to be here with you guys. We got a message, a live stream coming from Pastor Todd. It's going to be exactly what we need to hear. Absolutely. And this week is such a good message, you guys. We want to make sure we give you guys time to share it with someone that you love, someone that might need it. And if you're at a local watch party around San Diego watching with loved ones, be sure and take a photo and tag us on social media. We would love to see where you're joining us from. Yep. And if you like me, guys, you like to send that message from a YouTube. We also have YouTube where you can send a message. We have Facebook. We have Instagram. So whatever format that you like, guys, you can send a message and help somebody else come into contact with the love of God. Absolutely. And you guys have impact we could never have. So be sure and leverage that today. We'll give you three minutes to reach out to someone that you love. And we'll be right back. Welcome to Reve at Home. My name's Gracie, and this is my friend Derek, and we're so glad you could join us today. Yes, guys. Hey, Reve fam, we love it when you chat down low and let us know what you have going on, how the week is going. Let our newcomers see how we get down here at Reve Church. And to all our newcomers, we want to make sure we give you a special hello, so say something down low so we can all connect with you. Absolutely, and if you're looking for more ways to connect and grow here in this new community that we've built at Reve, be sure and visit our website where we have small groups for everyone to join. Yep, and if you like me, guys, you'd like to keep up with the church on Instagram. You can also keep up with us on Facebook. So we made it real easy for you to stay in contact with the community that we have here at Reve Church. In just a few moments, we'll be transitioning to our tithes and offering. And this is just such a beautiful time where people from all walks of life can be generous here at the church. Yeah. And today you can give safely and securely in less than 30 seconds by visiting us online at Reve.Church. Yes, guys. And before we dive in, let's watch this powerful story of generosity. My name is Art and Jenny Hagopian. We've been attending Reve since uh, week three, which was back in November. I was always generous. I've never been a giver. 
I think that Jenny was in the same boat. She's always been uh, generous, but uh, we felt um, that we didn't really know what we were supposed to do. No, it wasn't explained. When it was explained to us that this you get to give, uh, we started giving. It was really hard uh, in the beginning because we didn't know where it was. I mean, we had, it was tight, right? You get your check, you know, the money is, is already accounted for everything. And uh, we started giving. You, you might think, if I give this much, how am I going to get through the week? But you do, because God just makes it happen. Things, things will happen for you or things happen around you that he gets you through. And you just have the faith in him. And, and I have faith in you that he has faith in you and you have faith in me. And we just, you know, we, we pull it together and things, things work. And it works. Giving works and generosity works. We have a, a car that we had for our business and one of our employees was driving it and crashed it. He was okay, though the car was not. So we turned it into the insurance company. The insurance company said they were probably gonna total it. And we're like really bummed out because it was a used car. So we thought we weren't gonna get much of anything for this car. We're gonna have to get another car for the business. And well, we got a check for double of what we were expecting. We were thinking we were gonna get Eight. half of maybe what we paid for the car. Yeah, that was just, really? that was a supernatural thing. That is supernatural. How because, was that gonna happen? Uh, you know, we, like I said, we feel just connected and we feel that we are part of something uh, bigger than us. And I think that that's something that everybody should strive for. You should always look to become part of something bigger than you. It's, it's not about you, it's about other things more than, than, than just your ego and just, you know, the things that you're trying to achieve as a business person, as an athlete, as whatever, whatever it is that, that you, wherever you are in life. But we always wanted to feel that connection and we really feel it and we, we love, we love that we found uh, Rebe and maybe Rebe found us. And, then, <laughs> and it was just so, this is just exciting to see how God just mm -hmm. works in your life and he just removes obstacles that he is just amazing. It, mm -hmm. it really is amazing. And now that we know uh, the, the blessings and the abundance that God can really bestow onto your life, it's we cannot not recommend. <laughs> it's not always easy to, to give and it, and it does take faith, but God will always take care of you. He will. Even if you think it's hard and how are you going to get through the week if if you give on Sunday, God will, he's got you. It's just a powerful reminder, guys, of how it feels to be generous. And here at Red Bay Church, we made it real easy for the church family. Visit us at Red Bay Die Church. You can give safely and securely, guys. We want to thank you, Red Bay Church, for your continual generosity. That's right. And today's message is super powerful. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. In college, I worked as a bellhop at a local hotel. Uh, this hotel is located where I grew up in Charleston, South Carolina, which is a major tourist destination. So our hotel was very busy. Our team's responsibilities were uh, really divided into two parts. Number one, we would take luggage to and from people's rooms. And secondly, we would pick up uh, people from the airport. One night I was dispatched to uh, the airport to pick up a flight crew and a regular guest. So when I pull up to the airport, uh, I see the crew standing out front, but I do not see the additional guest. And so as I'm loading the crew into the van and I'm loading their luggage into the van, um, the only part of the crew that didn't get in was the captain. Now, as I'm walking into the airport uh, to look for the guest, uh, the captain says to me, he says, hey man, uh, why don't we just go ahead and go back to the hotel? It's been a long day, we should just leave. To which I elegantly responded, just relax, sir, and get in the van. <laughs> it was not my best moment. <laughs> And, and, and not a surprise that uh, the next day when I showed up for work that uh, I was freed from my future of that particular job. I got fired. <laughs> Why is it so hard 
to control the words that come out of our mouths. Why is it so hard to control what we say? You see, this leads us very uh, much into the next installment of uh, this series, which we're studying the book of James. And we're in chapter 3. And James talks about, in in James chapter 3, he talks about this idea of controlling our words, taming our tongues, taming the beast, (laughs) taming the words that come out of our mouth. If you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn uh, to uh, James chapter 1. We're going to go all the way back. If you've missed any of these messages, you can uh, track along and watch any of them on demand at Reve.church. And uh, James says this in uh, James chapter 1 and verse 26. He says this, if you claim to be righteous, but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. (laughs) I mean, James is a straight shooter, right? He just tells it like it is. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes, you know, when it comes to uh, just to life, you know, sometimes I, 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 I don't take things as seriously as I should, right? And sometimes, if I'm not careful, I can put sins certain sins into different categories, right? And, and, and it's, it's kind of like that with this, right? There are certain sins, you know, like, like murder. That's serious. Like, you know, like adultery. I mean, that's a big deal. Stealing. Don't do it. I mean, all of those are a part of the Big Ten, the big, you know, Ten Commandments, right? But if I'm not careful, I can put other sins like bragging, flattery, telling a lie, a white lie, you know, like saying yes to something that I really want to say no to. Right? Like I can put those into a different category and say, are those really that big of a deal? But throughout the letter of James, what James is trying to communicate (laughs) to us, he's trying to drill home to us. He's saying, listen, what we say, the words that are coming out of our mouths, that is a big deal to God. In fact, if you don't control your words, if you don't control what you say, your religion, your religion is worthless. It's meaningless. Man, our words and what we say is a really, really big deal to God. In fact, it's so much so that if you look in Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 6, it talks about things that God hates. Did you know that there are things that God hates? It's not people. It's things that people do. Well, if you look at uh, James, uh, actually Proverbs chapter 6, go ahead and read that this week if you want some extra credit. All right, go ahead and do that. Uh, Proverbs chapter 6, out of the seven things that God hates, three of them have to do with our words. Three of them have to do with what we, ha- what we say. The words are a big deal to God. And this is why James takes so much, so much time in, in chapter 3 of breaking this down for us. Right? And what he's doing as we, as we get into this text is really, really what he's saying is that uh, there's, there's power in my words. There's power in your words. And the first thing that he points to is this. My words will determine my direction. Your words will determine your direction. Where is my life going? Where is my life headed? My life is moving in the direction of my words. Now James frames this. Uh, uniquely in, uh, in verse 3, and he uses two examples. And he says this, We can control very large horses by putting a small bit into their mouths. By controlling their mouth, we can turn the whole animal whatever direction we want it to go. He goes on and uses a different illustration. Or take ships as an example. A tiny rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot wants it to go. 
even though the winds are strong. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Here James is using these small examples, a bit, a rudder, determine direction. The tongue determines the direction of my life. You may not realize it. You may not be aware of it. You may not know it. But your words, the words that you've spoken over your life and the words that have been spoken over you have in in some major significant ways have directed your life. What James is getting at is that our words create worlds. Words determine direction. When I was in high school, my grandmother passed away. And so our family made the trek from Charleston, South Carolina to Davenport, Iowa. Now in high school, I was a, uh, I was a skinny high schooler. How many of you were just an awkward, you know, high schooler and it had to do with your body? That was me, okay? I was like 130 pounds soaking wet. I played sports. I played basketball. I played soccer. But I was a skinny, uh, I was a skinny guy. And so on our way to Davenport, Iowa, we stopped in Des Moines, Iowa to see some uh, extended family. And so we pull up to our uh, extended family's house and we go up to the door and, and uh, Mima, <laughs> Mima comes to the door and, uh, and she opens the door and she, see, she looks and sees me. And the first thing that she says is, Todd, man, if, if you just weighed, if you just had some more weight on you, Man, you would really be something. (laughs) See, some people have uh, challenges losing weight and some people have challenges gaining weight. I was in the latter. She says, hey, Todd, man, you would really be something if you just gained some weight. That's what Mima said to me. Now, I don't know if that's politically correct. (laughs) I don't know if she should have said that. But that's what she said, and and guess what? Check it out. Her words directed me. When I got home from that family trip, I I joined a gym. I started working out. I changed my diet. I gained 20 pounds. Why? Because words create worlds. Our words direct our lives, and words that have been spoken to us direct our lives. Uh, James goes on to say that there's really two ways that words direct us. Number one, my words can destroy what I have. Uh, My words have the power to destroy. James says it this way in verse 5. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. <laughs> wow, that is, that is so graphic, James. Come on, again, he, he just shoots it straight. What James is saying here is that your words have the power to destroy what you have. Your words have the power to destroy your career, to destroy your family, to destroy your marriage and relationships and your kids' relationships. The tongue, he says in verse 5, is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. Now, we saw this last year here in California. We had the most uh, fires in in the fire season uh, on, on record. And one of those fires burned half a million acres, was, was, was set on fire by one fire. And that particular fire has been traced back to one person. Not only that, they were able to trace it back to the exact 
moment that it happened when one person was, ham was using a metal hammer to hammer a metal spike in the ground and one spark that wasn't even noticed just came off uh, of, that, uh, of that spike and, and caught some dry material next to it. Nobody even noticed it. And in one moment, that one spark set half a million acres on fire. I wonder how many fires we set by the sparks that come off of our words that we say, the words that come out of our mouth. This is what James is talking about. He's like, listen, you got to tame your tongue. Your words have power and your words direct your lives and your words have the power to destroy what you have. Uh, let's do a, a two minute study, a two minute case study on some spies in the Old Testament. Okay, so uh, when God delivered the Israelites, the nation of Israel, out of Egypt, God promised them a promised land as an inheritance. Now, at this time, Moses sends these spies into the land. He sends 12 spies out. And, and what the passage says is that uh, as they come back, 10 of these spies, so the majority of these spies, they come back with this negative report. And we see what happens in Numbers chapter 13 and verse 30. Then Caleb, one of the spies, quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession of the land. We can overcome it. We can do it. God has given us this land. Let's go. That's my paraphrase. But the men who had gone up with him, the other 10, said this, we are not able to go up against those people. They are too strong. They are too numerous. They are too big. They look like giants and we look like ants. This was their confession. And because of their negativity, because of the negative words that came out of their mouth, they destroyed what they had. If you look at the preceding verses, God had already given them the land. God had already blessed them and they destroyed it by what they said. Look at Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 19. It says this, too much talk leads to sin. Anybody ever been there? <laughs> I know I have. I got the t-shirt to prove it, right? Too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. I mean, that is a refrigerator verse if I've ever seen one. You see, our words can destroy what we have. And second, what James wants to let us know, again, our words are powerful, right? Our words have the power to destroy, but our words also have the power to bless. Our words uh, can uh, bring blessing. My words can bless what I have. My words can destroy. My words can bless. My words can curse. My words can give life. Now, we're going to unpack blessing in just a minute, so hold on to that. But this leads us to the very next point that James makes. And it's this, my words, they're powerful, but my words always reveal my heart. You see, my words are not really just about my words. My words reveal a deeper reality of what is inside of me. My words reveal and reflect my heart. What's coming up and out of me? If I'm critical, if I'm judgy, you know, if I'm, if I'm condemning, it's really just reflection of what's going on inside of me. This is how James says it in verse nine. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father and with it we curse human beings who have been made in the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. In other words, what James is saying is like, there, there's a war going on inside of us, guys. 
There's a battle going on inside of us. And, and uh, our words, our words are oftentimes a reflection of our heart, a reflection of a greater reality of what's going on on the inside of us. And James says this. James says the real problem, the real challenge that we have, it's not really our words. It's our heart. <laughs> the words that are coming out of your mouth, they, they aren't really the problem, the main problem. They're a symptom of what is going on with our heart. And so it's not just about, hey, you know, just stop saying those things. You know, just try harder. I mean, just control what is coming out of your mouth. No, it's not really about that. Look at what James says in verse 7. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. Now, James is not talking about my dog, my golden doodle, Callie, because she's the exception. She has not been tamed. <laughs> I can tell you that. That's another message, okay? But all kinds of animals have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. I'm going to say that again. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. No one can tame the tongue. Modern day translation. You are a disaster. What does the Bible say about you? It says that you are a disaster. It's not about trying harder. Listen, the, this, the Christianity doesn't say, hey, just, just you know, uh, work, on, work on the words that, you know, you're, that are coming out of your mouth. You know, just try a little bit harder. Christianity doesn't say that. Christianity is the only religion that actually says, no, you know what, you want to know what's happening? Because of Jesus, God is turning you into a new person. He's changing you from the inside out. He's changing your heart. He's giving you a new heart. He's giving you a new power. He's giving you a new life. And he's giving you a second chance. You see, it's all about life and heart transformation. And we see it in this next verse, Ezekiel 36 and verse 26. It says this. This is God's promise to you. You see, God's not up in heaven saying, hey, I want you to try a little bit harder. I want you to clean up your speech. I want you to, you know, say nicer things. He's not doing that. He's saying, I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going to put a new spirit in you. I'll remove the stony heart from your body and replace it with a heart that is God's willed, not self-willed. I'll put my spirit in you and make it possible for you to do what I tell you and live by my commands. You see, God doesn't want to change what you do. He wants to change what you want to do. Christianity is not behavioral modification. It is heart transformation. So what is my responsibility? My responsibility is simply to allow God to change my heart. God, would you change me from the inside out? See, this is why the gospel is so important. This is our chance to change the world because we can change the world if we allow God to change our hearts. You see, we have to start with the gospel before we go on to what, what, what should we do? Like, here are some practical steps. We have, to, we have to start with Christ and allowing Jesus to change us from the inside out. And then, from that point, we have to decide to speak words of life. Right? We have to decide to, to speak words of affection, words of encouragement, words of praise, words to lift people, not to push people down. You know, it's so interesting if you look at the life of Jesus, 
when Jesus was baptized. So before he went into public ministry before he healed the blind and raised the dead and preached sermons and did all the good that he did before he did one thing. He was baptized in the Jordan by John the Baptist. And during his baptism, the heavenly father spoke these words over Jesus. This is what God said at that moment. Heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. Like, that's my boy. He is awesome. And I'm so proud of him. You see, before we change our behavior, before we change our lives, our heart has to change. And the only way your heart is going to change is if you hear these words spoken over you. Did you know that God the Father is saying this over you? He's saying, you're my son. You're my daughter. I'm so proud of you. It's in you that I am well pleased. That's what he thinks about you. You see, it's in response to God's love. It's in response to God's affection that our lives can change. And now we can go live the new lives that he's created us to live and to speak the words that he's created us to speak. Hey, let me pray for us as we close. God, thank you so much for this moment. God, I, I pray for that person who's watching right now. God, maybe that person who uh, doesn't even know you. They feel a million miles away from you. Maybe they've lost touch with you. God, I pray for that person. If that's you today, would you just pray this prayer with me? Would you just pray this simple prayer? Jesus, I give you my life. Jesus, I give you my life. And the Bible says that if you prayed that prayer, that you just became a brand new person. You've been given a second chance. It's not about what you can do on your own. It's about what you can do in the life you can live through the Spirit of God living within you. If you prayed that prayer, now uh, God is saying, now go and live a new life and a new power. God, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation, he'll never let me down, and I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and
this week. We pray that God blesses you in your leisure. We pray that God blesses you in your labor and just want to speak Ephesians 3.20 over your life. And now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ever ask or imagine according to his power that's at work within you. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. God bless you guys. We cannot wait to see you soon.